Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for the introduction. That looks, that sounds very serious. Actually, uh, my talk is really uh, answering just one question that we are constantly getting asked at the booth, and I guess everybody has here still in the crowd. What is Microsoft doing at the open source conference? Okay, so that's uh, 20 minutes to answer that question. Uh, and I will, uh, I hope that by the end of my presentation, you will finally understand why we are here. And by the way, please feel free to come talk to us uh, at the stand at the booth today, tomorrow with me and my colleagues. So I will actually start by saying like my own personal connection to open source uh, is relatively old. I started uh, working with open source with Linux specifically many years ago. I was a lecturer at the university. I was a PhD student and lecturer. That was before Microsoft. And then I went to the dark side. And that was almost 15 years ago. So I'm as much uh, kind of blue blood Microsoft as you can find in this company. Um, and yet here I am, right? And my role is open source lead. So yeah, I kind of, um, I, I'm pretty sure you will be uh, interested in our story. I will start by, you know, uh, talking about the importance of open source in general. Uh, there are a couple of uh, things here on this slide, on the next slide, about the role of open source in the digital transformation. So all the companies in the world, whether they're in software or any other business, right, uh, they are really thinking about how they can make sure that they uh, continue innovating in whatever they're doing. And so there is a, this wonderful uh, piece of research that was done by Forrester uh, last year, and they're talking about the importance of open source and that this powers enterprise digital transformation. And I really like this. Um, it's a really perfect English that failure to fully consider open source is unforgivably negligent. I mean, this, I, I really love, like, I'm, I would never be able to come up with such a beautiful English. But, okay, well, it's really, um, it's really happening. It's not just in software companies. You know, a couple of examples on the next slide. Goldman Sachs or Safeway, right? Disney, I mean, not exactly uh, software development house, even though you can argue they are these days, right? I mean, look at how they are uh, doing all their animation right now. It's all, at the end of the day, computer software industry. But they are really saying what, you know, because it's kind of a fine print here, so you cannot really read, but it's from their web pages. Like, open source software is important to Walt Disney Company. So it's important to everyone, right? Uh, all walks of life, software companies, hardware companies, non-IT companies altogether. And this is important for you if you want to continue innovating. And uh, at some point of time, we actually uh, realized it also at Microsoft. So uh, it's really, if you come to think of that, we are going through a big transformation of our own. And uh, we actually really want to make sure that we are empowering every person, every organization on the planet to achieve more. And that means many different things. And so that means uh, empowering, like building the pl best platforms and taking uh, advantage of all sorts of different innovations, regardless of whether they uh, came from within organization or from outside. And this is really critical. So if you're looking today, uh, it's really all about openness. So we really want to embrace, uh, we really understand that we cannot uh, create, even though Microsoft has one of the biggest R&D uh, budgets on the planet, uh, you know, bigger than some of the countries, but uh, it's still not everything, right? So you really want to make sure that you are capturing everything wherever it comes from. And um, just to uh, get a little bit ahead of myself, uh, the reality is that's already, that's already happening and it's already being noticed, right? So it's, this is actually an interesting uh, article from Fortune magazine, so not even an IT publication, and you will be able to find many more of these days. I mean, it really becomes kind of a, uh, bread and butter for journalists writing about Microsoft. And they're talking about, it's really interesting, like essentially this is a money publication, right? And they're talking about open company, they're talking about cloud, they're talking about hybrid strategy. So essentially they're talking about the strategy of Microsoft as a software company, right? So this is, and I think it's really connected to a large extent with a new CEO that we have, Satya Nadella, who uh, started these change, you know, kind of accelerated this change that has been already happening earlier, but uh, I think it really came to the uh, fore in the last two years or so. However, it's, it hasn't started like um, from, from zero. So Microsoft has been involved with uh, open source for a long time. Actually, my personal first connection to open source and to Microsoft was when I was still in the university. Actually, my first connection to Microsoft was Microsoft Research. 
And they were doing stuff uh, around uh, something called shared source at the time. So they were coming up with the idea of how we can try to make Windows source uh, uh, available for people who are, uh, want to study operating systems. So uh, this is actually how I got introduced to Microsoft in the first place, because I was teaching operating system course essentially at the time, and I was, guess what, using Linux, right? So, and um, that continued, uh, so the very first things were in research, they were in connecting to the open source companies and platforms. They were talking about how we can make sure that open source software can talk to Microsoft software. But uh, then it really became, you, you can see here uh, on the timeline, we got uh, really involved in uh, open source uh, foundations and also uh, we con continued contributing code to uh, open source uh, uh, projects. So today uh, we really, uh, I, I will show you some of these things, um, but we're really following the following approach and let me build the whole slide. So um, we really want to make sure that we enable uh, Linux and open source to be first class citizens on Microsoft platform. So essentially, whatever you're doing on Linux, we should be able uh, to support, we should be able to run on, on our public cloud on Azure, and we, we need to be able to also integrate and interoperate with that, okay? We're also releasing open source, uh, in open source format, our own products. Um, again, this is not something new, but we are doing that on much bigger scale than we ever did before. So, um, for example, today, if you're in Microsoft in the development team in Redmond, and you are starting a new project, one of the first questions I will ask you is, is this project going to be available in open source? And if not, why not? Right, so there must be a really strong business reason not to release an open source. In the past, it was the opposite, right? So, and finally, we also participate in an ecosystem not just conferences like these, but also uh, uh, the standards group and uh, uh, foundations that uh, support the development or, or standards for interoperability. We also work with the partners. That means that we're talking to the partners that Microsoft probably never really talked to in the past. Right? So we had our own uh, nice ecosystem, but if you want to work with the open source community, that also means different vendors different ISVs, uh, different uh, system integrators. So all these partners are really new to us. So the next slide is actually kind of list of some of our quote unquote achievements that we had in open source so far. So um, one of the uh, things on the left side, we released SQL Server on Linux. So you can actually download it today and run it. Uh, it is available as a public preview and we are launching that uh, in just a matter of a uh, couple of weeks. And um, you can actually uh, see it's one of the first uh, Microsoft first party products that we made available on Linux, right? So we already did something uh, similar with Visual Studio. We released uh, parts of Visual Studio uh, that you can run on Linux, you can run on Mac, you can run in a browser actually. Um, but like this really like a major server product that we have to be available on Linux, this is the first time. So um, we are really proud of that. I'm pretty sure you also heard about uh, Windows subsystem for Linux. So essentially, on Windows 10, you can now run uh, Bash and you know execute whatever commands uh, uh, f uh, from this shell. Uh, we signed a couple of uh, agreements with different companies, not just Red Hat. We also partnered with SUSE. We, we actually were trying to work with all the major uh, Linux vendors. Um, at the same time, still the thing that um, a lot of our engagement is centered around cloud, is centered around Asia. We, Microsoft, are not uh, a Linux distribution uh, company. Like, there is no Microsoft Linux, okay? Uh, don't expect one. This is not what we do. There are other companies that are doing that and are doing great and they've been doing that for many years. However, what we want to make sure is that these uh, Linux distributions that we will be able to run on our public cloud infrastructure just as good as they are running on premises. So essentially our promise to, to you as a developer or to uh, Linux distribution companies, to the vendors, that if, you, if it runs on Linux, we can run it on Azure today. So uh, like kind of no questions asked, right? So this is a bold promise um, and uh, there have been a lot of work involved in that. However, we're also seeing the dividends. So if you're looking at Asia marketplace, so uh, the way for, to distribute solutions on Asia, uh, you will see that more than 60% of images actually Linux open source. So that's, 
I can tell you this is not what Microsoft initially expected when we launched Azure, right? And there is still this perception that Azure is kind of Windows only public cloud. And uh, so this is something that we need to dispel. So you can run Linux, and this is just as well a public, uh, first class citizen on this platform. And uh, today, uh, uh, one of the other things that you will see, I will also build a couple of other points. So we have uh, more, like close to 10,000 open source companies used. We have 6,000 employees working on open source directly, like on a daily basis. If you just count everything that Microsoft developers are using, like open source, that number will be way higher. It probably will be pretty much every single developer that we use at Microsoft today. Uh, but there are also people who are dedicated to just supporting and building, developing open source projects, okay? So uh, we also released more than 3,000 open source projects. As a result of that, sometimes we are getting like ourselves to quite new, t new grounds, right? So this uh, article published on ZDNet last September, uh, a study they did on GitHub, and guess who is at the top of the, uh, by number of contributors for the projects? To be perfectly honest, I think it's kind of overblown. If you really look carefully on the right, like uh, our friends from Google, and you know, if they would just count Google and Angular together, they would still be a number one. But the point is different. It's actually, can you imagine these things happening five years ago? And me coming from you know, Microsoft for you know, spending like almost my all grown up life in this company, I couldn't. Okay, so this is really new Microsoft. This is not your dad's Microsoft. Um, and now this is really, uh, uh, that, that's even, you know, fresher news. And that, you would never believe how many jokes about Microsoft and hell freezing over I received that day. So, because Microsoft became a platinum sponsor for the Linux Foundation. And again, this is something unthinkable for Microsoft to support essentially what's uh, built in the charter of Linux Foundation is one of the major purposes is to support the work of Linus Torvalds, right? So for Microsoft to become a platinum sponsor, get a seat on the board of directors, that's pretty unusual, I would say, right? Now, as I was saying, a lot of that really boils down to our uh, public cloud platform, and this is uh, why Microsoft is in this business. So, and this is also why Microsoft is no longer fighting with the open source software, no longer calling it a cancer or whatever we were doing in the past 15 years. Um, I think the major really difference is that Microsoft has finally found a way to uh, be part of that process. Microsoft has finally found a way to uh, monetize uh, Linux and open source, just like everybody else sitting here in the, in the audience hopefully uh, succeeded to do. So uh, the, what we found out, what we realized, is that whenever you're running something in the cloud, it absolutely doesn't matter if you're running Linux on Windows, uh, because it's not about the uh, licensing costs, right? It's about uh, services, it's about utility, it's about being able to charge your consumers by the hour, right? And this is for us, in Microsoft, this is the answer today. It's not the only answer, and I was showing it to you. SQL Server on Linux, .NET uh, uh, Core on Linux, means that we will be also releasing our first party products there. But at the very beginning, at least we want to make sure that we will run your uh, Linux uh, project and infrastructure perfectly on Azure. So a couple of words about Azure, why we think it's, you know, uh, it's one of the biggest computing infrastructures in the world. I think there are really literally only a couple of handful of companies that uh, invested so much in the uh, cloud infrastructure worldwide. And it's going to stay like that. They're not, they're not going to be 10 different public cloud companies a few years down the road. There might be three. There might be, I don't know, two or four or whatever. You know, uh, but it's literally, the investment is so big that only a few companies will be able to afford it uh, on a global scale. And we have this scale. We already have this scale. I mean, Microsoft had this global scale, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago. And uh, it's really, uh, if you're looking at the number of transactions that we are running or uh, the uh, number of cores that we are running in Asia, it's amazing. And we are really having more than 90% of the biggest company in the world already using Asia. And that number grows. You know, like half a year ago when I was showing this slide, it was 85%. So literally all the companies in the world are getting this transformation to the cloud. They're really buying into that concept. They start using that on a daily basis. 
And to support that growth, we built one of the biggest infrastructure. And you actually see like a, some representation there on the screen. Uh, it's uh, by the number of regions that are available to developers geographically, we're number one uh, by far, actually. So uh, we have more than twice the number of AWS regions. I'm not saying by cores. By cores, probably they're bigger, granted. Uh, but if you're looking for the global fo footprint, you will not find anything better than Azure today. And by the way, we're still growing. Uh, we just launched last month uh, new data center in Korea, actually two data centers, the region. So we have in Seoul and Busan. And uh, we will be continue uh, doing that in other countries as well. So uh, just to get to the conclusion, and I'm already close to running out of time, uh, we really are all in on the cloud. We are also all in on the open source because we see that this is the way to the future. We want to be part of this uh, open source ecosystem, uh, not only as a consumer, but also as a contributor. And uh, we, we think we already uh, achieved a lot in the past several years, and the world noticed. Again, a couple of quotes that I'm, I'm not even going to read it, but essentially, probably the biggest impact, I mean, for me personally, I, I don't know, as a Microsoft shareholder, this is the biggest impact on our stock price, okay? So uh, it's really uh, in the past few years, we're going on this trajectory that is really positive. Um, to conclude, a couple of links. Um, we have a wonderful website, uh, microsoft.com open source, easy to remember. Uh, we also have a couple of uh, social media platforms. So we are on Twitter, we are uh, on Facebook. Uh, please uh, follow us on uh, Twitter, open for biz APAC, and the same on Facebook. Um, if you are here at the conference, come to our booth after the presentation. Make sure if you're interested in Asia, you, there is a wonderful way to get free Asia subscription. There is a link at the bottom. So uh, for students, developers, for anybody, actually, most of my demos, I'm doing using these free uh, uh, Azure subscriptions. It gives you more than enough to, to experiment with Azure to uh, get the idea of how it works. Um, and um, yeah, so with that, actually, we have three minutes for questions, so I'm ready to answer. And by the way, if you're, if, uh, you're too shy or whatever, if you cannot get to our booth after that, even though it's just right outside, uh, there is my email, Twitter handle, find me on LinkedIn. We also have LinkedIn. As a, it's a wonderful social platform as well. Questions? Come on. So as uh, the cloud, Microsoft Cloud is running on Linux, why not Windows? Uh, can, can we... Uh, a little louder. So, uh, does this, does this mean that the Microsoft has uh, lost the battle with Linux and uh, now collaborating with them? Uh, sorry, uh, can you just speak a little closer to the microphone because I barely hear you. Here. Okay, so uh, the Microsoft Cloud is running on Linux, right? Yes. So does well, this no, not not really, but okay, it runs on Linux too. Yeah. So. Does this mean that uh, Microsoft has lost the battle with uh, Linux and now they are uh, trying to collaborate with Linux? We, we try to collaborate with everybody, okay? So just to be very clear, we can still run Windows on, on our cloud. It, it's great. It's where we started. You can run Linux on Azure as well. So, and we want to make sure that actually whatever, like the whole landscape, if you're thinking, I don't know, uh, Red Hat or Suzy or PHP, Node.js, whatever you're running, we want to be able to run it on Azure. We also, by the way, I didn't talk about it in this presentation for the lack of time, but we can perfectly well manage your infrastructure as well, or you can manage your infrastructure. So we have tools like, I don't know, System Center or Operation Management Suite, where you can manage the whole infrastructure. Again, regardless whether it's on Windows, whether it's on Linux, whether it's Android phones or I iPhones, essentially. This is what we do. We really want to make sure that we are uh, kind of platform agnostic in the new world. Okay. Well, Audrey. Hope that answers. Yep. Yeah. How, how does the Microsoft movement to open source impact the enterprise license agreement? So um, the thing is that uh, it's a great question. First of all, uh, I would answer you uh, with a question. How does it um, open source impact enterprise agreements for Red Hat? I, uh, for the last 20 years, I work in the corporation. I always wanted to cut our license spends. And it seems that Microsoft is always ahead of me whenever I said, 
let's do Linux. Microsoft now is doing Linux. No, no. So, <laughs> so we don't do Linux. No, if you're buying uh, like a subscription, right? If you're buying support, it will not be Microsoft. Okay, so you will still have to talk to Red Hat or Suzy or whoever it is provider for Linux. Now it's it's slightly different. Uh, what I mean to say is that it's really um, it it almost doesn't matter in the end of the day. Uh, we, what we are seeing is a big trend from on-premises to the cloud computing today. And there, even the whole point of enterprise agreement, in a way, it kind of becomes a moot point. So yeah, you can still sign it. You can even get the benefit by prepayment and so on and so forth. But this is more about pay as uh, what you consume rather than paying for the licenses. It's not really about the licenses anymore. And so that, that's not answer number one. And answer number two, that for the introduction of Linux didn't do away with the enterprise uh, pricing or licensing. Just look at the Red Hat, they're a $2 billion company, and they're selling essentially what's free, right? So I don't think that that really has any significant impact on uh, this story. The cloud computing is much bigger. Thank you. All right, um, I was just shown that I'm out of time. So uh, if you have any questions, I'm, I'm just outside. Uh, thank you for your attention, and have a great conference. All right, thank you very much.